tax increases, the budget is a little down from the year prior. I think it's right at 74 million. Um, we didn't have some expenditures and some some things that didn't come in, but um, but I think one of the, the the bigger things is is that we did have a rate path increase on uh, our sewer plan, and this is the last year that. But I feel pretty good about sewer water because uh, as an organization we feel good about that because it's competitive with the surrounding companies and we're all having to deal with aging infrastructure and and those type of things when it comes to um, our budgets. Um, I know people get tired of hearing it, but without solid sewer and water infrastructure we're really handcuffed on anything else, right? Yeah, uh, it took me a while to put my hands around it 16 years ago, so you got to have capacity, and you pay for capacity, because when you build it, you have to pay for it, and so you can't continue to um, have some of the quality things that we have around us, such as the manufacturing plants, and all our water companies have to have good capacity, and so probably just going down memory lane again, you know, um, the Anderson Joint Regional Water System purchased the Duke Energy, had water and transit at one point in time, and it's probably for the city of Anderson and probably for the water companies too, the Joint Water System does a great job in, in being able to provide us clean water, and that's um, water is the new oil. Uh, city employees got raises too, right? Yep, $1.9 million in regards to that total package. Uh, I think we are looking at the competitive nature of employees, so just like in the industry, uh, in private, public sector, we have to look and take care of our employees. We brought our no employee in the city, Anderson, who's an hourly employee, we brought everybody up to $15 um, dollars, uh, an hour, and also, looked at um, just different departments um, doing wage studies to see where we're competitive, for example, in um, our sewer department with employees there. And so uh, part of that $1.9 million, well, all of it was to adjust um, our, our employees. And I think um, even if there was not an adjustment in that pay range, um, there was a 3.25% um, cost of living increase. And then you had some capital improvements, some building improvements, some roofs and all that, right? Yep, we, we, we have always had to take care of um, that part of it, the, the capital improvements. This building that we're sitting in, which um, contains um, City Hall and um, City Administration, and also uh, the Municipal Building Center. Um, we had to do capital improvements over there. And so th and that is always a challenge and we kind of plan ahead for all of that. We're very pleased on um, building permits, n uh, new housing starts compared to um, uh, different periods of the city's recent history. So those are up, so property tax is up I think probably um, just due to the fact that we have a very strong commercial quarter on Clemson Boulevard and, and Highway 81 Greenville Street um, and so if, if any of the companies that survived and did well during the pandemic we have those companies we have Walmart and Sam's and Target and those Lowe's and those were companies that did very well um, so to speak, during the pandemic. And the hospitality tax continues to be an important factor, right, in funding? It is. I mean, it came in um, a little bit over $4 million. Um, it's a little over a decade old. And some of the things that we do recreationally can't be done without um, the hospitality fund. We are, um, I think, probably um, it's July, so probably within um, 30 days we'll be substantially finished with the second phase of the rec center project, which is um, um, more ball fields, um, synthetic turf, uh, permanent seating. Uh, it, it's um, you can 
actually see progress now. And so if you had been by the rec center, uh, that would be one place I would go and, and, and take a look at, which, you know, that money, rec, uh, hospitality money has to be uh, create quality of life things. And, and, and so now it allow us to focus on uh, the second half of Lindley Park to make that connection with, um, I call it Upper Lindley and Lower Lindley. I don't know if we'll keep with that, but uh, in my mind, the upper part of Lindley. And so now we need to, uh, engineering has already started on the lower part of Lindley. And so, um, and hopefully we can get that project out of the ground in 2023. We did a bike and pedestrian master plan um, five, six years ago where the connectivity of, trying to continue the connectivity of that trail um, um, looks like, I mean, it, from the progress that we're having with the East-West Parkway to be able to con continue um, working with the transportation ANATs um, in regards to getting those connection points to the Civic Center and to our partners at ANMED. And so um, basically to continue that, um, if you go on our website, you can kind of look at the bike and pedestrian trail. And I think the the interesting thing about that trail is that it connects neighborhoods. It's an inner city type of trail. There's uh, a group of individuals who are working on a um, trail to Belton, which I think is exciting too, and that just makes connectivity to our trails more important. And so th that's one thing I think that all our citizens want, um, whether you live in a city or a county, you want that connectivity, that being able to get somewhere by walking or biking or running. We do have a, a detailed recreation plan. The comprehensive plan, um, and we're excited to to, we, we signed a contract with a firm out of Chicago uh, that's a national firm that um, they've done work all over the country. They won a lot of awards for some of the work they've done. Any other news coming from downtown development? I know the new green space on the north end of town is being used some. Yeah, and, um, it, um, we were down there just last Friday, um, North Main Commons and um, just excited about that public space um, next to Magnetic Brewery and um, even some of the, I mean, uh, TBA has a, a, a art fountain project there that depicts the textile industry and our heritage to the textile industry. Um, uh, McCoy, uh, McCoy Wright um, is um, also looking at um, they're substantially completing that commercial building there and we understand that to be um, a mix of retail so I think that's important. We finished the streetscape and also some additional parking behind Kimbrels and there's a lot of development um, Greg throughout the, the, the community, the city um, from um, you know, and a lot of time the private sector hears about it before we hear about it as far as people applying for building permits. But, you know, you start looking at the um, the Clemson Boulevard corridor and the old Chick-fil-A building and there's a Dunkin' Donuts that is going up on, I understand that's uh, three tenants. Um, so, you know, there's just not only downtown, but there's a lot of activity in general. Any updates on uh, a potential restaurant for the top of the new parking garage? Yep, I, I can say that we hope to um, have a, a contract in place um, in July. Um, and um, it, it will be um, a, a, a very good space in regards to um, the folks that are looking at that. And I, I think the attorneys are dotting the I's and crossing the T's to make sure that it's a, uh, it, it works for both parties, the city and, to, and the entity that's looking at it. And I think that the, the public will be pleased with it. Um, these folks operate in a couple of different markets and they really like our space. Does the city still get a lot of requests from folks wanting to live downtown? Any updates on Palmetto Lofts? They're close to opening? Yeah, I mean, I know I keep saying 30 days out, but supposedly they are leased 
and I noticed this week where some of the heavy equipment is being um, dispersed so they must be getting very close so uh, again I think that's 31 32 units um, we also have the Kimtech property that um, um, on Tribble and Murray that um, those folks seem to think that they'll get started very soon um, as far as moving dirt and so um, you know again 120 some odd units too um, in close proximity to downtown um, so there's there's a lot of um, interest in um, both mill sites we were um, awarded a half million dollar grant by the Appalachia Regional Council um, to start a shared kitchen and that shared kitchen is in the East Market Street parking garage and um, just saw some pictures the other day where work is being done interior wise. Any other areas the city is looking at annexation uh, and, and do you have a master plan where you decide which areas to consider growth or? Well you know one of the things that we have to do is we, we look at we have to figure out how to can we serve them you know number one can we put police fire and um, public works because we've got to do those three things one thing i will say in in this budget um, we are um, we need a, a fire station four and so to um, maintain um, growth patterns uh, within the city and possibly um, other annexations on the north end of town um, we, we've got to have a fire station um, somewhere in that area and so our team's looking at land um, to do that and uh, that affects a lot of things it affects um, your ISO ratings when it comes to um, insurance protection and, and insurance rates so uh, and, and and we've got to make sure that we don't put our firefighters uh, in bad situations when we don't have enough coverage. Anything else coming up this summer? I know the block party's back in full swing and there's lots of things. Anything, anything else the city's working on between now and September? Uh, there's always something. Um, but I think, you know, the block party and Kerry Jones and his folks do a great job. Um, just recently went to the uh, marketplace there, the, the play Shrek. Um, was was uh, well attended um, for four nights. Um, I think there's some Greg. There's some other things programmatically that um, there's movie night, Carolina Rampart with movie night, and so um, the, the uh, North Place Commons. Um, they're programming that with the tenants around it, and so uh, there's there's a I guess a buzz um, here in town. You know, almost practically every night of the week now but especially that thursday friday saturday nights of, of the week downtown bird scooters um they they are um, um most people like them some people don't but i but i do think what i think is encouraging is um you see all kind of people i, I see adults ride them i see you know um, young kids ride them it's good when you have kids, and, they, and those kids spend money. They go to figs and buy ice creams, and they buy coffee and so forth. So, um, pretty excited about that, and they're pretty much following the rules.